Hey guys, my name is Cameron and welcome to my outdoor adventure channel. Okay, for this video, um, I just want to pass on uh, some great ideas uh, for equipment for a camping trip of this nature. Okay, uh, just great gear, great equipment, uh, great ideas to bring along on a camping trip of this nature. So what kind of camping trip am I on? Uh, I am base camped at McFarland Lake Campground. I am not in the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness, and a few of these pieces of equipment you would not want to take along on a Boundary Waters Canoe Trip, uh, and we'll get into that in just a moment, okay? All right, but first, let me show you guys where precisely we are. Okay, so we're in far northeastern Minnesota, and we're all the way to the end of the Arrowhead Trail. And we are camped at a campground right here. And it's called McFarland Lake Campground, this being McFarland Lake. Okay, and it's uh, outside the Boundary Waters Canoe area. And uh, so you can have things here that you can't take uh, into the Boundary Waters. Okay, so uh, Toby and I have camped here over the years. It's a great campground, it's free camping here, first come, first serve. And what's really cool too about this area is. Uh, you can get into the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness a couple different ways. Uh, you can paddle west down McFarland here, which is outside of the Boundary Waters Canoe Area. You can paddle down here into <clears throat> Pine Lake, big, beautiful Pine Lake, okay? And so you can go that way. You can paddle down west and get to Pine Lake, or you can go north into John Lake, okay? And from John, you can go on up into East Pike, and that's a hell of a long portage. Uh, and by the way, there is a uh, video on this channel of that portage. So if you guys are interested in seeing how difficult or what it looks like, uh, just look at look for the video here on my channel, okay? All right, and then uh, also from John Lake, uh, you can go east uh, down the Royal River and then uh, on up into the Fowls, okay? And then on up into Moose and from that point west. Uh, this is the east end of uh, the park, if you will, the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. This is the eastern boundary here. So from here, you go points west. Uh, so um, at any rate, uh, the campground here that we're staying at, uh, I have a video, uh, guys, on this channel. If you're interested in seeing what this uh, campground is like, uh, how many sites, what amenities, yada, yada. Uh, there is a video uh, on my channel here of this campground, so feel free to uh, look into that and check that out, okay? All right, so that's the area we're at. We're at a campground outside the Boundary Waters Canoe Area in far northeastern Minnesota, okay? All right, so that being said, let's get into a few pieces of great gear. Okay, new for me using this, bottled water, okay? And this is not something you'd want to take into the Boundary Waters Canoe Area simply for weight. Okay, that's five gallons, so you're looking at about 40 pounds. Excuse me, looking at about 40 pounds there. That's not something you want to be carrying across portages. Okay, all right, so this is meant for base camping, obviously, that sort of thing. So, but uh, very cost effective. Uh, two bottles, like $13, like $6 for the pump. Um, I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner, but uh, in previous trips, I was just going down to the lake, uh, getting my water boiling or cooking with it, uh, and that sort of thing. So, uh, great uh, gear idea for base camping outside the Boundary Waters. Okay, so, another piece of equipment. It's a fire steel, okay? I gave up using matches and uh, lighters years ago, okay? And this thing is awesome. One of these things is awesome. Now, this particular one is called the Gobspark Armageddon. Uh, you can Google that. That's really what it's called. It's called the Gobspark Armageddon. And it's a fire steel. And it costs like $20 uh, plus shipping. Uh, very, very cost effective, very cheap. And you can throw out all those lighters and matches that are unreliable. Okay, so you basically pop this out of here. And then you strike the uh, source and you get sparks. And this thing really produces sparks. So Google it and learn about it. It's a great little piece of equipment, very cheap. And screw the matches and lighters. <laughs> okay, 
So another great piece of equipment there. Okay. Another uh, great piece of gear, twine, okay? Now, uh, this is great because there's a million and one uses, obviously, for uh, a product of this nature, uh, twine. Uh, and it's far better in camp than, say, twist ties or something like that uh, for the environment. Um, you don't have to worry about this. Uh, but this will obviously biodegrade over time if you happen to miss uh, some pieces here and there. Um, so uh, twine is a great piece of equipment to bring. Uh, and you can take this into the boundary waters, obviously. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, so it's a great piece of uh, gear to have along. Uh, you know, versus that white cord, you know, for like clothesline. I mean, you can certainly bring that too, whatever is your fancy. But uh, this uh, twine is what I use, and I use it for everything. <laughs> so, okay, so another piece of gear, uh, tarp. Um, and that you obviously can take into the boundary waters uh, without being said uh, million and one uses um, and uh, in the summer months we get a lot of rain up here uh, in northeastern Minnesota and uh, it's great to have along a tarp uh, I think this one is uh, 10 by 12 or 8 by 12 something like that so pretty good size um, and it's got the grommets in it and everything there so just a great little uh, piece of gear to have along um, hey, buddy, this little chipmunk coming in. He wants to be a movie star. There he is. So at any rate, yeah, so uh, a tarp is another great piece of equipment uh, to have along on uh, either a base camping trip or going off into the boundary waters or wherever. Just bring your tarp, okay? Bring a couple of them. And I like camo, by the way. Okay, so another uh, good piece of equipment is an axe, okay? So, uh, both a hatchet and an axe uh, for base camping is a great idea. I don't like taking an axe or hatchet into the boundary waters. I use a saw. I just take a Sven saw, and uh, that really serves my purpose really well. But this is not really something that you'd want to take to the boundary waters. Um, also, because of the weight. Uh, this thing, I suppose, weighs about 15, 20 pounds. Uh, somewhere around there. Uh, it's heavy. It's got a heavy head on it and a uh, heavy handle. I think that's a hickory handle. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> I mean, you know, it just goes without saying when you're uh, traveling in the boundary waters, uh, one of the first things uh, that you have in consideration is weight. So because you have to carry everything across all those portages. So obviously it goes without being said. Okay, so those are uh, some of the uh, basic great piece of equipment uh, gear that I want to tell you guys about and lastly here I will just want to give you a few tips um, about hatchets or about axes here and uh, just some things to be careful of okay all right so say you've got your piece of wood there okay here let me uh, set the camera down for you guys and we'll demonstrate a little better Prop this thing up here. <laughs> Something like that there. Is that cool? Okay, so I'll try to speak up so you guys can hear me. Okay, so uh, one mistake I have made and I've seen other people make is uh, when they're going to go split kindling uh, for their fires. Um, one of the things they'll do is they'll hold a piece of wood, right, like all of us do, and then they'll sit there, yeah, and, and chop and do that sort of thing, right? Okay, that is a real easy way to get hurt. Get your hand the heck out of the way, okay? So what you want to do is just tap to get the uh, axe started, and then get your hand out of the way. Once again, you just hold a piece of wood there, put the axe on the piece of wood, and then you just tap it on a hard surface, just like that to get it started, and then you can pick up and swing and split your wood, okay? So that is a great idea, versus going something like, hi -ya! okay? I have seen people do that, I have done it, and I'm like, so this is just a technique, just a tip to, uh, 
prevent uh, injury, hopefully, uh, for all of us. So um, make sure you have your hands a heck out of the way uh, when you're uh, chopping kindling. Okay, so and one other tip that I would like to pass on. Um, say you've got a piece of wood uh, on a stump or something, right? We'll just use this for example. Um, if you're going to stand back and split uh, this piece of wood, what you want to do is put your feet far enough apart so that if you miss uh, your in-laws, or I mean the uh, piece of wood <laughs> that you're going to hit, um, the axe will swing free between your legs and it won't uh, hit or nick uh, your legs, God forbid, that would be so painful. So, um, and this, obviously you don't have your hands involved here, so you can stand back and swing and just chop, right? Okay, so but the main thing again is to make sure that you separate your legs far apart so that if you miss, the ax will swing uh, between your legs and not hit your body, so, okay? All right, so those are a few good tips on how to use an ax, just stuff I learned. Oh, a long time ago. <laughs> this is the wood pile I'm leaving uh, for my next campers too, by the way. So, and a nice clean fire pit. Okay, what I can tell you about that, make sure that fire, those coals are dead out. Okay, that goes without being said, wherever you are. Uh, whether it's here in a campground, or whether you're in the Boundary Waters canoe area, or wherever, make sure that that... Uh, fire and those coals are dead out before you leave. Get buckets, buckets of water and just stir the coals. So that's what I do. Now, uh, last night we had about three quarters of an inch of rain. Um, and uh, so that thing is dead out. And I've already uh, gone in there and stirred it, you know, stirred it around and whatnot. Um, but at any rate, uh, that's one thing you want to do. Make sure that thing is dead out. The other thing, make sure there's no garbage in it, okay? So when Toby and I got here to this uh, campsite, our favorite campsite in McFarland, uh, we found a bunch of garbage in here. That is just horrible, okay? That is just horrible. Uh, in one of my other videos here, I talk about, uh, on my channel here, I talk about camp stewardship. Uh, and one thing I like to do before I leave every campsite is take a plastic bag and walk around and just look for garbage, okay? So leave the uh campsite better than what you found it uh in this case uh these people whoever finds this one uh, is gonna be pretty lucky because they've got all that chopped wood and they're gonna have a really clean camp so <clears throat> and i don't use those grills by the way those grills are gross <laughs> and a lot of times uh they really don't work that well they don't swing or they're stuck in that position or whatever uh for those of you that have used them at campgrounds you know what i'm talking about so at any rate, so that's just some tips uh, on some gear uh, that I wanted to pass on to you guys. Hope you enjoy the video. Um, if you did like this video, give it the thumbs up. Uh, then you can head on over to the bell notifications and hit the heck out of that thing for me. And that way you get notified every time I uh, publish a new video to my awesome channel here. Okay? All right, so I also uh, love comments. So if you want to talk about this video or if you've got great ideas to pass on to me, I'm all ears. I love learning and I love finding out more and more ideas about camping, uh, techniques, gear. I'm always on YouTube looking at gear uh, to bring and stuff like that. Um, so if you uh, have any great ideas or you just want to comment, say, hey, nice job, whatever. I love comments. That's one of my favorite things about YouTube is talking with people about the videos that I make. So, okay. All right. So I hope that these, uh, uh, these, uh, that this video really helped you guys out and that you, uh, can, uh, share, uh, your comments and any information, any tips that you may have, uh, for me or anyone else. Okay. All right. Thanks folks for tuning in. And as always, feel free to subscribe. I have over a thousand subscribers and I have over a half million views on my channel. So it's getting, uh, <laughs> it's getting pretty exciting. The bigger and bigger it gets, the more exciting it gets. So um, at any rate, thanks for tuning in, folks, and we will see you in the next video. Okay.